Hey folks, today we're gonna to talk about USB hubs. Powered, unpowered, and what devices you can chain together to share one single USB port on your computer. USB ports are pretty cool. Not only do they send data to and from your computer, but they also can power small electronic devices. So you don't need to have another power supply. Plug this guy straight into the computer and it runs. Yay! Problem of course is that on most computers, you'll have one, two, at the most three USB ports. But these days we've got a lot more controllers than that. And oftentimes you need to connect a mixer or a uh, audio card. So how do you do it? How do you balance all these devices and what hubs should you use? That is the question we'll tackle today. And first of all, let's talk about the two different kinds of hubs. The most common is an unpowered hub. This is a very, very simple device. It simply takes one USB port and turns it into many. So one to four, and four is usually the limit. Why? Because this USB port is capable of delivering between 450 to about 500 milliamps, depending on the laptop. The spec calls for around 450. Some deliver a little bit of extra power. So that means that there's a limit on how many things can share that one port. Not only how many, but what kinds of things can share is really, really important. So common controllers like this basic guy here draw around 100 milliamps of power. Small controllers are usually in that range. Larger controllers that have a sound card like the Control S4 or S2 often can draw the full 450 milliamps of power. Sound cards like the Audio 4 can draw about 200 all the way up to the full power for the larger sound cards. So in general, if you are running four small controllers, which is what I run, two X1s, a MIDI Fighter Twister and a MIDI Fighter 3D, all four can, and for me, do share a single USB snake that I've made here out of chroma cables and a Targus unpowered hub. I like this Targus guy because of its integrated cable. It looks good and uh, the USB cables come out really nicely. So I always put this guy off the right side of my computer and then I connect the sound card to the left. Now that's a really important detail. Sound cards kind of complicate the issue. Even if you have a sound card that doesn't draw as much power, you don't want to put your sound card on the same port as your controllers because sound cards not only draw power, uh, pass um, information back and forth via MIDI, but they also use a lot of bandwidth because of the audio, especially something like the DJM 900 where I've got four discrete channels of audio coming in and one coming back. So that guy needs his own dedicated USB port. So your mixer, your sound card, your large DJ controllers, put them on their own port directly to the computer, and then daisy chain your smaller, uh, lesser powered devices like your X1s, your F1s, your MIDI fighters onto your unpowered hub. So your sound card, no matter what, always has one USB port reserved for it. I don't like to mix it with anything else. It's just asking for trouble. And when you do, you could get audio dropouts, which happened to me a lot when I tried to combine it with other controllers. So you've got one port dedicated to the sound card. That only leaves one other port, usually on most computers. Let's say you're the guy that needs to have his big controller and all of his little controllers and needs a ton of power then you need to use a powered USB hub. Powered USB hubs will almost always have a little power port right here on the back where you can plug in your power supply and usually they have more than four ports, sometimes seven, eight, nine, ten. What's happening then is the USB hub is taking that external power in, like this guy is here, and distributing a full 450 milliamps of power to each individual USB port, so you can run bigger controllers and more devices. I rarely see that happen though, and in my personal experience, bringing powered USB hubs into the club can be a bit of a pain in the butt. So 
I limit myself to four small controllers and one sound card. And that ends up being my live setup. I hope this basic primer on USB hubs helped you. If you found it helpful, you might enjoy some of our other videos or articles. You can check us out on the web at djtechtools.com.